Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the People Show. Check the post Rescue Nation brought to you by Nebraska Spine Hospital. Today I'm joined by a former Husker, one of my former teammates. He was a defensive tackle, nose guard, first team all Big 12 in 2003. He was a seventh round pick by the San Diego Chargers. He played from 04 to 2010 in high school. He was also a two-time state wrestling champ, went 64-1 and his junior and senior year, 28-0 with 25 pins his senior year. His name is Ryan Bigham, and I've actually got a question for him right off the top that I wanted to ask him when we played, and I just, I never did. So I'm going to ask it now, you know, 18 years since the last time Ryan and I spoke. Ryan, there's a rumor that you won your state wrestling championship match in seven seconds. Is that rumor true? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is true. I would, I would pin most of my guys in in less than like thirty seconds. Um, I kind of worked that way. I had I had a really quick uh, snap down, and then I, you know, do a cross face, cross arm bar, and 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 turn them around and get them on the mat. And so yeah, it was a quick it was a quick uh, pin. Kind of sounds like you talking about the the the, the cross face and the armbar. I'm like, damn, it's like MMA or WWE going to bust out the steel chair there. That is crazy. Seven <laughs> seconds, dude. That is absurd. All right, I saw you got in, getting one fight the time we were there. You were kind of a calm demeanor type guy, very intense but calm. And you know when you weren't playing football, I saw you getting one fight, and I won't mention the other guy's name. Big dude, big old lineman. It was ugly, and it was ugly quick in your favor. I do remember that. Um, what have you been up to lately? Because when we were setting this up. You said, hey, man, we got a bump of bath. I've got a photo shoot. Are you, are you a model nowadays? What are you up to nowadays? No, I'm, I'm not a model. I actually um, I have different uh, investments and things that, that, uh, that I have, and uh, we're, we're doing a shoot for, um, for one of my companies, and so we have models and things that line up, and I usually attend those events. So, so yeah, that's, that's what we got going on tomorrow. Man, I was going to say, NFL nose guard, Husker nose guard to model. That would have been a heck of a transition right there. I actually, I do have another story about you. Um, I'll never forget, I was a freshman, and we were doing high reps. We usually tended to do low reps, trying to get bigger and stronger. One day, we were doing like 15 reps on the bench, or whatever it was, and you came up to me, and on your card, your weightlifting card, it said 275. I don't know if you remember this. You said, with all seriousness in your face, you said, how do I put 275 pounds on the bar? And I looked at you like, are you serious? You go, I never, I always start out with 315. I've never gone below 275 in like two or three years. And so that is a true story. I don't know if you remember that at all. Um, Do you remember that? And do you have any, I don't know, stories or memories of yours truly, your much younger at the time, former teammate? You know what? That's that's crazy. I don't I don't remember saying that, Adam. But um, but I'll say that you know back then maybe maybe that doesn't surprise me because I was a bit of a meathead. So um, <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. That doesn't really surprise me. But but uh, you know what, man? I I think one of the earliest memories I have of you uh, was first of all just your abilities as as an athlete. Um, you picked up a football and you threw it all the way from one end zone into the stands on the other side. And I was like, holy shit. I mean, this guy can throw a ball. And I didn't realize how athletic and strong you were. So uh, very early on, I I realized that uh, you were a very talented player. Well, I appreciate that. Those are kind words. It is. Ryan and I literally have just spoken for the first time in 18 years. We haven't chatted since 2003. So it's always good to catch up. But what kind of prompted this interview? I was at the Huskers Open Practice a couple of weeks ago, and I'm sitting next to former walk-on DB Kevin Goose, who was one of your team teammates as well as mine, and he's like, man, every once in a while I chat with Bingham, he's like, did you hear two years ago? You know, they had to send like search and rescue in after him to find him in a forest, so that's literally all the details I have. So tell me what happened. Did you end up staying overnight for a few nights? How long were you out? What was that experience like? Did a bear attack you? I mean, I, I have no idea what happened, so it's, I'm curious what happened. Uh, when they said search yeah. and rescue after you. Yeah, well, that's that's a that's a really crazy story. Uh, this was yeah several years ago, and um, I had just to be quite honest with you, just been going through a really hard time. I had, I'd gotten a divorce, and and I needed to retreat to the mountains, which I often do. I love the mountains, and and I would do back then. Um, and so I headed up to Glacier National Park, which has the uh, famous brown bear, the grizzly bear up there. Yep. And I was, I told my parents and uh, a friend of mine that I would be back on Sunday and I left on a, on a Thursday. So I was going to plan on backpacking into the country and, and staying, you know, uh, 
you know, those that period of time until Sunday, at which I was going to be back at his house. I never showed back up to his house. Uh, so I did get lost out there. Um, there was uh, a couple trailheads that weren't so clear to me. And, and I'll, I'll be honest, I just got kind of dis. I didn't know exactly which way I, I had turned because there was a couple uh, different pathways that I had taken and uh, they were unmarked uh, trails. So uh, I got stuck up in there for an extra five days. So wow. about the fourth day, I really started realizing like, man, you know, I've been in contact with anyone um, and they've got to be wondering, you know, I knew the first day that'd be, okay, Ryan might be just staying a little extra second yeah, yeah, same thing. Third day, like what? And then, you know, but actually my mom, come to find out afterwards, was hysterical. Yeah. And sent um, uh, the search and rescue team, like on the second day. I didn't know. So they had been looking for me since the second day. Um, I had several encounters with the grizzly bears and, and that kind of thing. Never anything uh, dangerous or, you know, critical to me, but, you know, definitely saw a lot of them. At nighttime, there was a gunshot that I had heard one night and, and some grizzly bears I could hear. So had gotten into some guy's camp, uh, maybe just, you know, down the uh, the pathways or whatever. But um, on on the uh, on the fifth day, um, they finally found me and uh, they had sent a, you know, the rescue team up in there and, you know, found me. And, and of course, I was excited to see people and, and they <laughs> brought me back down to the ranger station. They said, you need the first thing to do is call your mom. Yeah. Um, and so I got down to the ranger station. I picked up that phone, called my mom, and she was just hysterical. Oh, I'm just she's like, you know, what? I don't even need it. Everything is good now. I just need to hear your voice. I'm just glad that you're not you're not dead. I'm glad they found you. So, I mean, it was to me, I wasn't that scared because I, I thought eventually I'd find my way out. Um, for those uh, four days, I was I was yeah trying to figure my way to get out because I backpacked pretty deep in, into the glacier and, and uh, didn't know which path to get back. And uh, so I was, I was glad that there was actually people out there looking for me. Um, had there not been, I think I could have found my way back. I mean, it's it's debatable, right? But yeah. um, but definitely, it taught me one <laughs> one really big thing, which is well, two big things. One is that my family loves me, and there's a lot of people out there that do love you. And so if you're going through a hard time, always remember that. And the other thing is that um, man, I was so grateful that there are people out there that uh, that do those kind of services, you know, and, and help rescue and find people because they did actually do that so you know when i encounter grizzly bears and i hear gunshots i don't consider that serious either that's just you know another day in the, in the character <laughs> house okay so talk to me I, I got like 42 million questions but i'll just start with one or two here so when you encountered the grizzly bear the brown bear obviously this is not your first encounter to make you way the way you make it sound i mean what do you what is going through your mind obviously you've done this before but what are you going What's going through your mind? What do you do? How do you make sure you stay safe? How do you not crap your pants? I mean, how does this process go throughout your head? So, so the biggest things with with uh, brown bear is obviously they're territorial, and uh, so you don't want to you don't want to like get in their territory and and you know scare them. So you, when you're hiking, you make a lot of noise. You're always making sure that you're making noise. So if you do, you don't want to jump, you know, or, or, or startle them because that causes them to react to you. The other thing is they have, you know, cubs or, or little ones. You definitely don't want to be anywhere near those cubs or in between the cubs and, and the and the grizzlies. So um, every encounter that I would have, I would be, you know, loud and, and I would see them from a, 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 you know, a fairly safe distance. Let's so say like 20... 20 yards or so yeah and i would see them and you know they'd be in the tree line or something um and so as long as you kind of keep your distance you're good they're they're not like man eaters right they're out there eating berries and, and um you'll see their scat and stuff on the trail with a bunch of berries in it so you realize okay there's no humans in that so that's cool um, <laughs> but you know they're they're not as scary it's like anything else i've you know i've dope before too and i've been with uh, great whites and and same kind of deal it's like these huge massive animals but they're actually quite uh, interested in us and they're not you know they're not quite as scary in real life when you as long as you give them the distance they deserve and you know kind of respect the fact that they're they're territorial and, and you don't like you know scare them and, and get uh, in between them and their cubs usually you're fine um, as far as gunshots same thing i mean i carry a gun in the in the in the wild and that's really your last resort i mean if you did encounter a grizzly where it was coming at you and it, that was your last option 
I mean, you have bear mace and a gun, and I had both those. That would have been your last option. Uh, I assume the gunshot was, you know, just getting the gun to uh, getting the bear to leave by shooting a gun in the air, and so that you know, uh, this bear would would leave the area. I never found out. I never actually heard. Uh, although several trails had been cut off from the rescue reserve, uh, talking to them that they had several trails where they weren't allowing people to hike into because there were so many grizzly bears on the trail and they weren't moving. So, you know, they couldn't have people going in and out of there and, and uh, you know, with the, they potentially could get attacked. Um, I have, you know, I've grown up in the wild, um, backpacking and all that. The outdoor life was, was kind of my, that's always been my thing. So, um, and I love animals. I love animal life. Uh, man, it was it was to me that was a really good time for for me to kind of like retreat the mountains and spend some time with nature but it was also a really scary time as far as you know getting lost and any if you've ever been out in the mountains and, and kind of gotten disoriented not knowing where you're at uh it's it's a really scary feeling that part was more scary than the bears and i guess knowing that they're out there and stuff that kind of does play through while you're sleeping um but you take precautions there too. You make sure you don't have anything that smells while you while you're sleeping. You know, no no uh, deodorant even. You don't even wear deodorant. Uh, you you know, make sure your your food and everything is is away from wherever you're sleeping. Uh, but like a hundred yards, I mean, put as far as you can from your, your side. And usually you're good. Uh, but that would probably be the scariest thing is at nighttime. Oh, for sure. So I like how you just threw randomly threw sharks out there. Um, not wearing deodorant. I'll remember that in the future. My wife will appreciate that. I feel like we need to talk more than once every 18 years. Um, so, obviously, the bears weren't a big deal to you. You grew up in Utah. You're living in Utah now. You've been in the wilderness quite a bit. But you did talk about, hey, being lost. You think you might have found your way back. That's debatable. But when you're out there and you really don't know, was there any point in time where you truly got nervous? Or did you always feel kind of deep down, somebody's going to find me or I'm going to find my way out? Or is there a point where you were truly nervous at any point? The real the real scare that I had was uh, food supply, right? And, oh, yeah. And knowing, like how long I could actually survive out there without uh, proper food because hunting is not always an option. And, you know, it's a lot harder and uh, than, it, than it looks, uh, depending on what kind of animal you're trying to get. So, yeah, I was, I was more nervous about you know, how long I would have out there. Cause I had everything I needed. I had a tent, I had a sleeping bag, I had, you know, a water pump, I had, you know, the proper stuff to, to keep me alive, but I only had a 14 day. I always pack like double. So if I'm planning on staying, you know, it's like a little more than double. I, I count my food. Cause it's like, you know, you never know. Uh, so I had like 14 day supply of food. So I was set as far as that, but if it was going to go beyond that, um, yeah, that would have, that would have been scary, but I'll, I'll be honest at nighttime, Anytime you're by yourself, your mind does play tricks on you, no matter what anyone says, even if you're totally comfortable, you hear things, Yeah, you know, and the night that I heard the gunshot and the, everything, yeah, then I was on edge for the rest of the night, and I thought, okay, you know, who knows where, how far that was, because it was kind of hard to tell, it just woke me up and, and startled me, Yeah, and, um, but yeah, I, I, you know, you, you do have, I was definitely scared of the idea of getting longer than 14 days out there then you start thinking oh man yeah i could i could be a statistic and just a story on you know some newspaper posts how many days were you out there and did you ever run out of food uh so it's, it was out there a total of uh nine nine days and they okay. found me yeah they found me on the on the ninth day and so, um, no, I, at that point I still had, you know, like I said, about 14 days supply and I was rationing after, after I'd gotten lost, I started really, you know, like slow, slowing down the consumption of food and just kind of, uh, trying to get my, my bearings. But I, I had never backpacked that area and just the area that I got into, I got disoriented, couldn't find the right trail, had to get back. I'd, I'd head on one trail and then it had me up over another mountain pass into a complete different area I'd never been. And, and it just got to the point. I was like, man, which, you know, I, I just lost my bearings. Yeah. I, I lost my direction. So I got lost. Last quick question for you. And then we got to wrap it up. Which is a more exciting moment? Getting a big sack. I don't know if you ever scored a touchdown in a Husker game. Getting a big sack, throwing the bones in front of Husker Nation. If you scored a touchdown or the moment search and rescue found you. Which was a more exciting moment for you? <laughs> man, um... I would definitely say that the the 
when they found me, that yeah. was really exciting, right? Because yeah. like life and death right there. I mean, it was, it was getting to the point where it's like, man, what's going to happen? So Yeah. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you joining me. We got to chat uh, more often than once every 18 years, but I appreciate you joining the show. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate it. All right. Until next time, Husker Nation, go Big Red. And always remember... Roll them bone. Thanks again to our sponsor, Nebraska Spine Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, when it's your spine, you do not want to mess around and experience matters. That's why you can trust the experts at Nebraska Spine Hospital, the region's only spine-specific hospital. They are the best at what they do.